We're about to release a brand new beer, and now we're dumping almost 4,000 pints of it. Why? So our number one goal at Tailgate is to deliver the best product every single time. There's a million different things that can go wrong in the brewing process. So it's important for us to have quality control, quality assurance, and do checks throughout the entire product life cycle. So interesting one from the last week is we had a beer, we packaged it, tasted delicious, then we tasted it again right before releasing, and we're like, this doesn't meet our standard. Is it good still? Yes. Is it excellent? No. So what does that mean? It means that we gotta dump it. And we're not afraid to do that regardless of the cost because we want you to have the best beer every single time you try a tailgate beer, you know that that quality is there. So for an example, the beer that we're dumping was an entire 15 barrel batch of beer. Now, this doesn't look like a whole lot because I can stand right next to it. Uh, 15 barrels equates to 3,700 and some odd pints. So we're effectively just dumping 4,000 pints of beer straight down the drain. Not good enough. Howdy, hey, all you pickle lovers. It's Brody here, uh, head brewer over at Tailgate. You might have heard some rumors on the streets. And all great experimenters, all great brewers, home brewers, to commercial brewers, everybody in between. Anyone in the science field knows that, you know, sometimes you get a little messy and, uh, you know, we're just here to try new things, always push the bounds, and we're not afraid to get a little pickly sometimes, and it doesn't always work. So a big part of our quality assurance and quality control actually starts here. It's during our brew day. One of our brewers is data logging everything that we're doing on a daily basis. As we go through our brewing process, which we brewed today, we're making the wort and uh, wort is just food for the yeast. One of the things that we do here is we're adding right around 41 trillion cells to uh, our beer. And in those uh, processes, we're trying to herd those 41 trillion cells through basically a cat door. And as we move through the process, each and every single place has its own quality control. So in our lab, they are taking daily readings of what our yeast is doing, what the flocculation level is, uh, what the cell count is, uh, and what the final gravity reading. Gravity reading meaning how much sugar is left over in our finished product. So as we move through our uh, brewing process, we go over to our bright tanks. We will go through a, a series of step crashes uh, we'll go through a series of uh, checks and balances to make sure that those products are exactly where it needs to be at that particular point. And that, at that point, we call it green beer. At that point, when we are ready to transition it, it will go into a bright tank and become bright beer. Bright beer is at a point where we're about ready to package it. We've got a couple of quality assurances and quality controls that we do here. We have a couple of very expensive pieces of equipment that tells us what the dissolved oxygen, which we don't want, what our uh, CO2 is, which is exactly what we want. We take uh, exactly how much alcohol is being produced in this, make sure that it marries up with exactly what the recipe we wanted to be. Here at this point, we'll come down to one of our tanks that is ready for package. Uh, we do one thing that is very important and uh, that is our quality control tasting. Now, I know that a lot of people assume that as brewers we just drink beer because it tastes delicious, but uh, your human body has the ability to taste up to 7,500 different components. And a trained palate has the ability to pick up visine dictones, uh, and or be able to pick up the flavors that we actually want, like this particular beer being a, one of our hazy IPAs. We do triangle taste tests. We also do uh, sensory data. And with trained palates, it gives us the ability to be able to forecast what it's gonna potentially taste like. So in a most recent example, we had a pickle goza that we produced 
We spent a lot of research and development into it. And with the said 41 trillion cells, you have up to four quadrillion different flavor components that you could potentially make. Uh, that comes from thousands and thousands of different ingredients between uh, the uh, water profile, the hop profile, uh, the potential bacteria that we're using, like a, in a Goza. Um, those are all flavor differentials that we end up working with. So once we got to this point, we were able to determine the beer ready for package. All the checks and balances worked out perfectly fine. But then when we got to the point where we checked it one more time before it went out to market, one of those ingredients didn't work in particularly well. And that comes to another aspect of quality control and quality assurance. Sometimes when you design a recipe, it doesn't really in particularly grab the ingredients the right way. And in this particular case, uh, we designed a goza and married it with pickle flavorings. And we found out post package that it didn't work to our standards. We wanted to really sing. So now we're gonna go back and redesign the recipe very much the same way a chef designs a uh, dish. And we will then be able to build that recipe, not specifically as a goza, but a vehicle to receive the flavors that will then also represent the traditional characteristics of a goza. It's a very different way of brewing beer just simply taking a traditional beer and slapping some ingredients into it and sending it out to market. It's much more research and development beer geared around it. So we do that with all of our beers, which is uh, fun and unique uh, and sometimes daunting considering that we came out with 270 different beers last year. Uh, and that means that we have to have very skilled people that know what they're doing but also to have uh, the scientific mind to realize when we do something, even though it's in the best intentions, when it goes to the point where we're about ready to give it to a customer, and we don't think that it matches up to our standard, that we're also going to, at that point, take one for the team, bite the bullet, dump the beer, and put it back onto the rotation and do it better next time and learn from our mistakes. So a big part of what we are as brewers uh, has to come with the creative part of knowing where all these ingredients are, but a lot of it is just science. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I love knowing when we mess something up as much as we did something really well, because that just makes us that much better for the next batch that we do.